Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. And let's crack on with today's first story, which comes from Faithlessness Calm 820 and says, Am I the asshole for not convincing my stepdaughter to meet up with her birth mother? To give you a little bit of context, I'm the stepmom. 30 year old taking care of my partner's daughter. I've known her since she was five and now she's turning 13. She calls me mummy and introduces me as her mum to her friends. Now there's the birth mother. She's living overseas and barely communicates with the kid. There was even a point that they didn't speak for two years because she doesn't call. Last time she went to see her daughter was 2019. She was here for two weeks but only spent one week with the kid and the other one week was spent sightseeing with her friends. In short, she's an absentee. My stepdaughter opened up to me saying that she doesn't want to communicate with her birth mother because she feels like she's a stranger to her. Three months ago, I helped my stepdaughter to open up to her birth mother about what she feels and that it's going to help improve their relationship if the birth mother is aware of what's going on birth mother was replying for a week or two and then became dormant again for three months. The next chat my stepdaughter got was the birth mother asking to meet up with her because she's coming back to the country for a visit. Now we asked what my stepdaughter feels about it and she said she doesn't want to meet her birth mother. She was bawling her eyes out because she doesn't want to go but she also feels bad about feeling that way. I feel like I could convince her to go if I wanted to and she'll listen to me but I also think that for so long She's the one that's always adjusting for the birth mother. She can't do anything if the birth mother doesn't communicate all these years and if she remembers to chat. Stepdaughter is always expected to reply. I think it's unfair on her part since it's supposed to be the birth mother's obligation and responsibility to have good communication with her daughter. What should I do? Edit. For those asking where her dad is in all of this, his point of view is a bit different. He thinks that stepdaughter should give it at least a try once so she could get her questions answered as to why her birth mother is like that and get closure. But he also thinks that if stepdaughter doesn't really want to do it, he won't force the issue and tell the birth mother what stepdaughter really wants. Ah, uh, it always breaks my heart when there's children involved in stories like this. Just trying to imagine how confused she is with the way that she's being treated over these years. Her bio mum dipping into her life then out again. It must absolutely mess with your head. But you know, this girl is 13 years old and you're just supporting her choices, which I cannot blame you for at all. But I think all you can do at this moment in time is, is just support her and, and, and that's pretty much it. And maybe find some professional help to help her navigate her feelings. Because like I said, it must be absolutely confusing for her. The first commenter says not the arsehole for letting the kid decide for herself. That's how it has to be. Nobody else gets any input on this at all. The only responsibility now is to convince and reassure the kid that she needs to not feel guilty at all and that she does not owe her birth mother any kind of relationship at all. Meeting her birth mother once or twice doesn't oblige the kid to continuing forever. Source was adopted. Relationship with birth parents was on and off for years. Anxious Routine says your daughter is old enough to make a decision. Listen to her, support her, follow her lead. Not the arsehole, to which Impossible Cattle replies to and says, just help her think things all the way through. So when she makes a decision, it's after the thought of all the angles. She is young to do it herself. Opie says, I did lay out all the options for her and it confused her even more. And she feels bad about herself for being conflicted on what to do. I will go with what she's comfortable with to protect her emotionally mentally another commenter says not the arsehole you're doing everything right and it takes a lot of wisdom and love to step back at the right times and empower one's child to make their own important difficult decisions you sound like a great mom who truly wants the best for their child and it sounds like you strike a balance of protecting and allowing autonomy and one more comment from the bearer of wisdom who says not the arsehole i'd say kiddo is old enough to decide for herself she's having huge emotions about it and she's only a kid so she doesn't know how to handle that yet all you can do is what you are doing by supporting her decision and helping her with her distress. There were times where my stepmom had to stand up for me when I didn't want to go home. She always said, I just won't let them leave knowing they're miserable. If they want to stay, they can stay as long as they want. I didn't live with my dad's family, but 
when I really needed a break from my abuser, it was my stepmom that made sure I knew I didn't have to leave. This situation is really difficult because what kid doesn't want their mom to just be their mom for once? She's still young and this has to be really hard for her to understand. Just make sure she knows she's safe with you and you'll listen to her no matter what she needs to say. Poor kid. I feel so bad for her. To which OP responds saying everyone in the family keeps on telling me to convince her otherwise because she's still her mother after all. And I don't agree with that. This reaction, the result of all the years of neglect she's done to my stepdaughter and I won't force her to do anything she wouldn't want to do. She was crying last night and my heart is still crushed a million times seeing her like that. So OP comes back in and says this is an update with a little bit of a rant. Though my stepdaughter has made up her mind that she wouldn't go. We asked her to at least message the birth mother that she can't go and the reason behind it. This is what she said. Hello, I just want to let you know I won't be able to meet you because I don't want to go. I mean, Papa and Mummy already told me that it's better if I go and talk to you, but I feel that I'm not ready to see you yet. Opie continues. She was nervous to send that and wanted to say sorry for not going, but I told her that she shouldn't apologize for saying no and that it's okay. And after a few hours, the birth mother responds. I understand. It's like we haven't seen each other for so long and then I'll show up out of the blue. I know it's going to be a little awkward and there's mixed emotions. But I want you to know, no matter what happens, you are still my baby girl. You didn't have much memories about me because I was already working while you were still a baby. We didn't have a choice back then because we have no money and I can't work in your country because of the visa. I didn't want to be apart from you too. I didn't expect us to be like this. This is not what I want for you and I'm sorry. I'm in your city this Saturday and Sunday, so in case you want to meet me, even for just a brief moment, just message me. I will go to you. Just 10 to 30 minutes of your time would be enough. I just want to see you and hug you. OP continues and says, It's a decent reply, right? But for me, all I see is a little bit of gaslighting that she had to work for my stepdaughter and no accountability, that she didn't communicate with her daughter as she should. He's saying that my stepdaughter has no memories of her. Well, duh. In this generation of modern technology where video calling is now possible, she's managed to not exist in a child's life. Also, she said a 10 to 30 minutes would be enough. I feel like she's just thinking about herself and what she would feel in that brief encounter, but didn't consider how hurt my daughter would be. My husband, however, sees a reply as a humble response, and I don't. Am I the arsehole for not being satisfied with her response on this? Edit, my husband clarified that he's not making excuses for the birth mother it's just that he has set his expectations of her so low that this response was decent enough for him the top comment with a response on this one says not the arsehole she's asking for a bit much considering she hasn't seen her kid in years and barely communicates with her i'm glad she's respecting your stepdaughter's wishes but maybe you should talk to her about starting smaller and exchanging messages to start with maybe moving up to video calling the timing is a bit suspect though why is she reaching out now just when her daughter is getting to the age where she understands she was abandoned and is able to articulate her feelings about it. I think your husband needs to ask further questions and find out if something else is going on. Is she ill? Getting married? Is she getting family pressure to bring her daughter around them? Why is this the first time she returned home in years? I have a hard time believing she's just a contrite mother looking to reconnect, especially since she's pushing for even a brief meeting. I have a feeling it's for a photo opportunity. OP says, A few months ago, I have helped and urged my stepdaughter to open up to her birth mother about stepdaughter feeling like birth mother is a stranger. Stepdaughter also said that she hopes they could slowly chat more often to get to know each other more. The birth mother was responding for a week or so then became dormant again for three months. The next chat she sent was asking my stepdaughter to meet up because she'd be in the country or in our area for two days. They haven't seen each other since 2019 and all she can allot for her child are those two days. This makes my blood boil to be honest. OP comes in with another update and says I had to calm down before I could post this one. After the last update my husband and I agreed that we will honour whatever my stepdaughter wants. I also asked him to relay my stepdaughter's reasons as to why she doesn't want to meet her birth mother. This is what we sent her. Hi, just spoke with stepdaughter about you going here. Looks like she's having trouble expressing herself to you. I just want to relay what she said when we spoke with her. Stepdaughter is in pain. 
She's angry and sad at the same time because she doesn't feel the motherly love from you. She feels like the reason why you don't communicate much is because you don't want to deal with her. She wants you to communicate at least once a day. That's already enough for her. She's also tired of trying to fix the bridge between you two because you'll only respond for a bit and then become a ghost for a while. She thinks a relationship is beyond saving because you don't put in effort to be close with her too. She's mad of all those broken promises you made that you don't fulfill. She's mad about all those special occasions that you never remembered to message her about. She's tired of feeling guilty because she's questioning herself why she feels this way. She's tired of being neglected. I'm recommending her to go and meet you so that those questions could be addressed. But if she doesn't really want to, I can't force her to do anything. Maybe try to address those above when you guys meet or try to chat to her again. Hope you both can fix this. We sent that to her three days before she gets here. She's seen the chat but didn't reply to my hubby. She also didn't chat to stepdaughter again after that. Now here comes Sunday. She says she wants to just drop a package off for stepdaughter. The stepdaughter says she doesn't want to pick it up herself so I told her dad to go outside and deal with it. After a few minutes, he went back and called stepdaughter to go outside with him. When I checked the CCTV, stepdaughter was already being hugged by birth mother and was bawling her eyes out. I was furious. We already had an agreement that we will follow what stepdaughter wants and despite that, he still forced her to do it. To make the matters worse, while stepdaughter and birth mother was hugging, in my daughter's most vulnerable state, birth mother's friend snapped pictures with a flash on as if to capture the supposed intimate moment for both. To me, it looked like they were just there for a photo op and not really caring about what stepdaughter would feel. After a few minutes, birth mother waved off saying goodbye as if she's just saying goodbye to a friend. After this, I went to see my stepdaughter outside and she said she's fine. She didn't realize how much she missed her birth mother and said she wants to spend more time with her. I felt relieved seeing that at least this encounter made her happy. The birth mother came back after a few minutes and they walked around the area while chatting. Now this is where it gets juicy. Take note that my daughter told me all of this and I'm not making anything up. Again, she's pretty open to me and most of the time we talk like best friends. Stepdaughter said that birth mother explained that the reason why she was not communicating that much is because she's busy with work. Although stepdaughter said that, I just didn't ask her why she can't take at least five minutes to chat to me. Still didn't understand that part. Stepdaughter also said that during their talk, a lot of negativity and blame was shifted to her dad. Birth mother said that the dad was always leaving her alone and not helping her. Stepdaughter's thought about this was, this doesn't sound like the father I grew up with. Papa is caring and loving and thoughtful. He never was neglectful when I was growing up. And birth mother also said that the reason for their breakup was me. This is where she's literally digging her own grave. Birth mother said that I was the third party in their relationship and that she was so heartbroken that she had to move forward instead of continuing the relationship. What birth mother doesn't know is that I'm a very honest with stepdaughter. Months prior, I told her about my previous relationship and what happened. She knows that I didn't break anything. Hubby and birth mother already broken up three years before I came onto the scene. Since birth mother already opened that door, I more than allowed her to defend myself. I explained to stepdaughter that it didn't make sense that hubby and I got into a relationship July and after three months. Birth mother also got into a relationship with someone. If she was so heartbroken, why is it that fast? Birth mother also claims that I'm not being nice to her. We barely had any interaction and she blocked me after I tried to reach out to her about communicating with stepdaughter. Stepdaughter said that she's disappointed that her birth mother lied to her face. She's old enough to know which is the truth and which is the lie. I told stepdaughter to just enjoy the time while birth mother is still here in the country, to cherish the moment and to just get anything positive or good out of their conversations. I also added to not follow the bad examples she is seeing and if her birth mother still talks bad about her dad and she's not comfortable about it, she can speak up and call birth mother out. My hubby and I talked about this and if she keeps on insidiously spewing out negativity to our daughter, we might limit their interactions because of how she's talking to stepdaughter goes against all that we're teaching our daughter. Hubby apologized that he deviated from our agreement, but he said it was a gamble that paid off since it made our daughter happy, that she gets to see her birth mother and that she might have regretted it if she didn't. Birth mother is an arsehole. And I just can't help but feel so bad for that kid. It, messing with your mind like that is just fucked up. And rightly or wrongly, I can't help but be pissed off at the dad as well that 
I, I kind of feel like he's putting this on his daughter's shoulders that like communicating with the mum when I feel like he should be stepping in and relaying her feelings towards the mum and yes of course supporting stepdaughter all the way but also telling the mum you know not fucking about you're messing with her feelings you're messing with her head and like one of the lines in that post with all the technology we got these days on our phones on our on our tablets on our computers it doesn't take a minute to set up a video call that's an incredibly sad situation but and i really do wish you all the best for the future but now i'm going to turn this one to you guys what do you guys make of this situation let me know your thoughts down in the comments below and let's move on to another story so this morning i logged on to twitter and nikki says what says i'm gonna need you to cover this mess and share the story with us and the story's from KL99 from the Am I the Arsehole subreddit that says, Am I the Arsehole for kicking my maid of honor out of my wedding with five days notice? I'm 23 female, getting married in a couple of days. Most of this is in the last two weeks. My maid of honor, 26 female, M, was in charge of planning my bachelorette party, which I wanted to be a surprise. We live in a city, but none of us live downtown. I was hoping for a hotel room downtown and having a fun night out with friends. Maybe a brunch. Most of the bridal party lived locally, but two girls flew in for it. When M picked me up two weeks ago on Friday, I was excited to see where we were going and what we were doing. We ended up going to M's one-bedroom townhome and spent the whole weekend there. There are eight of us, so it was cramped and we kept running into issues with only one bathroom. On Friday night, we had games and ordered pizza. Saturday, we had a mimosa bar, went shopping, ordered food and watched a movie before parting ways on Sunday. It wasn't the bachelorette party of my dreams or a particularly fun weekend, but it was okay and I appreciated it. Last weekend, my fiance, 32 male Jay, had just returned from a work trip. I hadn't caught up to speed on the party because there wasn't much to report, but when he returned, we were chatting and I told him about the party. He looked confused but said nothing else that evening. The next day, I got a message from M asking to meet up to talk about something. M revealed that Jay had given her a significant amount of money over a year ago, with the intention that it was used to pay for a bachelorette party. It would have been enough to pay for the entire bridal party to do a week-long vacation out of town, including airfare, hotel, food, drinks, and fun. I wasn't expecting this type of event. A weekend downtown would have been wonderful and even though the party at her home wasn't what I hoped for, I was fine with it because I got to be with all of my friends. She instead used the money to pay off credit card debt and hoped that no one would notice. I told her I needed some time to process and went home. After talking with Jay about it, I decided the best action would be to remove her from the wedding. I came to the decision because I don't feel like I can trust her and don't want her to be standing next to me at my wedding. I slept on it overnight and sent her a text saying this on Monday. I slept on it overnight and sent her a text saying this on Monday. Since then, I've been getting texts from her mum and boyfriend telling me how awful I am for doing this since I didn't need a big party and M was able to financially benefit. My m- <laughs> Cheeky bastards. My mum is also against removing her from the wedding as she's like a sister to our family and it would be tragic for me to get married without M there. The rest of the bridal party is split, with half saying I shouldn't have kicked her out and the other half agreeing with me. M has called me crying because she already has her dress. Jay and I paid for all the dresses and she can't wear it anywhere else. At this point, I want the wedding to be over with so I can be on my honeymoon and not have to deal with these people. So, was my reaction too extreme? Am I the arsehole? Now, there's not an update on this post as yet, I will send the message asking if there is any sort of update on it. But OP did respond to a few comments. So like myself, you're probably thinking, I wonder how much money we're talking about here that this person was able to pay off a whole bunch of debt. So the beauty demon asks, how much money are we talking? I would report this as theft, not the arsehole. And OP responded, 25,000. Now, absolutely not the arsehole, no matter how much money it was to begin with, but 25k, you know, is like a fucking slap in the face. This person stole from you, stole from your partner, betrayed you as well. This is definitely one of those ones where we always say, clap with me, folks, always press charges. Because if your partner gave her a bunch of money, 
I'm sure he didn't hand it over <laughs> in a silver suitcase. <laughs> I'm sure he would have transferred this money. So there's like proof of this transfer and that'll be able to be linked to the payment she made paying off her various debts since she got that money. And what the hell is everyone else's thoughts? Oh yeah, you should be happy for her. She got to pay off her debts. What kind of logic is that? She stole from you something that was for your wedding. That's not a friend. I know life is incredibly hard for, for many people, but I couldn't imagine anyone that I know in, in a struggling situation stealing from their best friend, a family member, or whatever. But Challenge Flat says the OP, who paid for the weekend at M's apartment? Did she pay for everything or was that divided among the seven other people there excluding you? Because then the other attendees should also be pissed at her. Either way, she stole from you and your fiance and needs to set a payment plan if she ever wants to save face. This is outrageous. Opie says, I didn't pay for anything other than some drinks I had delivered because there wasn't anything to drink Friday night, but everything else was split seven ways between the rest of the bridal party. The ones that flew in paid for their own flights. No juggernaut says not the arsehole. Oh my God, I can barely believe this. That bee is rotten and corrupt and I'm being very polite. She's no friend, let alone a maid of honor, and anyone supporting what she did totally sucks. It makes me furious just to think about it. I'd love to know the actual numbers involved here, but you've done a decent job of explaining the situation. I guess one question I would have is, why in the world did your fiance give her that money a year ago? You should have waited until much closer to your wedding. Opie says, I think he gave it to her under the assumption that a week-long party would take a while to plan and that she could start booking things that may have limited space, as well as dispersing money to coordinate flights. She's a person who has been in my life since I was 18 and typically comes over to our house at least once a week. My fiancé considered her a close and trusted friend as well. Splutes of the Best says, not the arsehole, since she committed a felony, the nicest thing you've done for her is just removing her from the wedding. Depending on the amount, you could press charges, take her to small claims court, etc., I can't believe your own mum is falling for her deception. I hope you have a wonderful wedding day and a great honeymoon. Opie says, thank you so much. Neither me nor Jay are interested in dragging this into court or pressing charges. He wouldn't have given her money for a bachelorette that he could afford and the situation is not worth the amount of emotional turmoil that will put everyone involved through. We've gotten enough backlash for removing her from the wedding. And the commenter who replies to that is just shocked and says, I just can't believe you're willing to let 25,000 walk away. This isn't taking $20 from your wallet or using your car to buy a fancy dinner. That's a substantial portion of an average person's wage, all for free. You make your own decisions, but letting this kind of theft go is baffling. Not only would I press charges, anyone who defends her is getting kicked out of the wedding. Minimum, you never speak to this woman again. Opie replies saying it's technically my fiance's money, even if it was for what was supposed to be a gift for me. He's leaving it up to me if I press charges and has let me know he'll support whatever route I want to go. I'm still kind of in shock and obviously upset, so pressing charges or taking her to civil court is the last thing on my mind. He does have text exchanges confirming that she received it and, and what it was for, and she has sent me things confirming that she used it to pay off debt and her mum and boyfriend have as well. What? Maybe I'll change my mind later on, but right now, I just want to get married and get away from the drama. What? Did I read that right? So the mum and the boyfriend's paying off their debts as well? Holy moly. Oh. I know it must be incredibly difficult to find out, you know, your best friend, your maid of honor has betrayed you in such a way. And mentally juggling with that must be devastating, but... I think you really need to take a back, step back from the situation and consider what, you know, someone who you thought was your best friend has done to you. And to anyone who doesn't know the amount and was sticking up for, for her, I would certainly be telling them, you know, she just stole 25,000 from me and then see what their reaction is then. I mean, for me, it doesn't matter in the amount this person decided to steal from you. That's trust broken. How do you look at that person the same way again? I don't think I certainly would be able to. And this is someone that's your maid of honor, someone who's your most trusted friend that you that you want there to be by your side during your special day. That's mad, isn't it? Holy moly. Anyway, Nikki, thank you very much for sharing that story. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this 
situation? How would you deal with it if it was you? Would you be pressing charges? Would you not? What about the friends who's sticking up for them? Let us know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.